Hello there and greetings from Split uh, once again and uh, probably the last time uh, this summer. So I'm uh, now reviewing the last uh, final round. Uh, I will just uh, quickly show you the game. I was paired with uh, a kid who doesn't have a rating. So um, yeah, I just to, to be honest, I thought that I would have an easy game. Uh, it's uh, the last day of the tournament. It's in the morning. I just, uh, you know, dropped my my family to the beach. I went to play the game, and I wanted to end, uh, end this quickly, so I can I can come to the to the beach. I, I can join them uh, on the beach. So yeah, I, I know it's it's maybe it's not you know the best sportsmanship to underestimate the opponent, but uh, I, I looked at my opponent and uh, I really had a feeling I would not have any troubles with uh, this, and I didn't have uh, troubles, but. Uh, yeah, uh, th there was one one very funny funny moment in the game which I'll show you. So I'll go quickly through the game, and after the game I will give you some uh, final thoughts about uh, this tournament and uh, improvement and way forward and so on. So stick with me uh, after the game. I will give you some uh, final thoughts and impressions. Okay, so my opponent opened the game with e4. I went uh, e5. Uh, he developed his knight on f3. I went for the Petrov defense or Russian game, which I usually play knight f6, and uh, he played knight to c3. And now we come to the four knights game, so I played a knight to c6 here, and he played a bishop to c4. So now it's a four knights Italian game. And uh, here, I, I, we just played, we both played this very quickly, it's basic opening moves, so I was writing down the moves, and I was just, you know, write a move and play the move, write, write down and play, and so it, it was quickly, so it's first four moves of the game. So um, here I always play a knight take uh, e4. And then after he takes, I can uh, make make this fork, and black is already fine. Or uh, many times, many beginners think that uh, they get something by taking this pawn instead. So I take, and after uh, they take, I take, I play d5 and have a great game. I mean, black is better here. So this is what I usually play. <laughs> and now, since this this is the fun moment, so we were playing quickly. I was you know moving the pieces, hitting the clock, writing the moves, and everything. And uh, you know, I just wanted to to end. Uh, uh, to end with this tournament and with this game, I, I was playing very quickly. And uh, by mistake, when I write down the move, I I uh, reach for the piece and I grab the, the wrong knight. I grab this knight. So I, I touch this knight. And now, you know, by the rule, I have to play the move with this knight. <laughs> Instead of touching this knight, obviously. So, yeah, funny, funny situation. So what, what, what can I do? I mean, what is the best move with this knight? Uh, it's it's not clear because whenever I whenever I move this knight, I'm I'm losing the uh, this this piece. So the knight is protect this uh, pawn. Sorry. So the knight is protecting e5, and I will lose e5. And not only I will lose e5, but I'll also he will then hit me, uh, hit my uh, weak f7 pawn, and I have to think how to defend the pawn. I mean, even even if he if he plays um, something else like uh, knight to g5, uh, it's still not clear how to defend this pawn. If this knight is, is just moved away, so I think I played the least bad move. You know, uh, I played knight. I had to play with this knight, so I played uh, knight to a5, uh, hitting the bishop. Now, of course, his best move is just to take the pawn. You know, because he's simultaneously protecting the bishop and attacking my f7 square. I have to take. He takes, and now I'm just a pawn down, and uh, I have lost a very important center pawn, and the white is better here. Yeah, so this is just a funny, funny moment, you know, grabbing the the wrong knight in the in the hurry. Okay, so knight a5, and he didn't see this. He just played the d3. Okay, so I took the the bishop. He took back, and I played the d6, uh, protecting this unprotected pawn. Uh, he castled. I played bishop e7, preparing to castle. He played bishop to e3. Okay, developing the bishop. I castled. He played h3, stopping uh, my bishop uh, to come to g uh, g4. So I developed the bishop on e6, hitting unprotected pawn. He played the queen to d3, developing the queen and uh, protecting the pawn. Here I played uh, c6 because I, I I didn't want to let to let his knight uh, here on d5. So this was uh, the idea. And uh, here he played a bishop to g5, so moving the same piece twice and wanted to pin my. Oh, no, not pin, not pin, attack my knight. I don't know what what the intention was. Anyway. Um, even before, so even if this position, I was thinking about uh, what pawn breaks do I have. So obviously d5, uh, I, I don't have a d5 pawn break. So the pawn break I saw was f5. So I, I was slowly preparing for f5. I had to play d6 before, just to stop, uh, you know, to control this uh, square. But uh, my 
thinking was, you know, to retreat the knight and then play if, uh, for f5 uh, break. And there are already some ideas, for example, this uh, rook uh, would be attacking the knight after exchanging uh, here the pawns, and then my bishop is attacking the pawn. So th there are some already some practical ideas in the air. So he played bishop to g5, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just continued with my, with my plan. So knight to d7 here, you know, after exchanging the bishop, so I'm planning to make a f5 break and attack his king. Uh, he took the bishop, I took back, and now in this position, uh, move 13. I mean, it's move 12 now, it will be move 13. Uh, he blundered a piece. So he played this knight to uh, d5, thinking that uh, my bishop doesn't have any escape squares. So he thought that uh, if I take, he takes. Now my bishop is trapped, and uh, I, I mean, he's getting his piece back. But it's still, even if this was so, this would be a bad move because I could just take this pawn. He takes, and now we are equal. We have equal material, and uh, he has ruined uh, his pawn structure in front of the king. Uh, his knight is now, you know, not protected by the pawn and so forth. So this would not be a good good idea, even even if it worked. But of course, it didn't work because after I take, he takes. I have a tempo move with uh, knight, so knight to c5, hitting the queen, and after the queen. Uh, Retreats. I now, now I have uh, escape squares for my bishop. So bishop to d7, and now I'm a piece up. So being a piece up, it's uh, it, it was just easy from here. I'll just go, uh, show you quickly. So here uh, he attacked my knight uh, with b4. I played uh, b5, hitting the queen. Uh, queen has to go back to uh, e2 because this pawn is also hanging. And now I play knight to. Uh, a4. And here uh, my opponent showed a uh, very good understanding of, of chess, which I, I have to give him credit for this. So my idea on, uh, after knight on a4 was to bring knight to b6 and then to occupy this uh, very strong outpost, uh, c4. And he, rea he realized this idea. So he realized that my knight could be maneuvered here, and then this is an outpost, and he wanted to stop it. So I have to give my opponent credit for, for noticing this and to stop my plan. And he stopped it by uh, playing c4. So I was he was thinking a lot of, uh, before this move, and uh, I also saw c4, and I was curious if he will see this, and he did play this. So yeah, congratulations on, on this move. Now I, I cannot do this this plan. If he played anything else, I would play a knight to b6, and now uh, he he wouldn't be able to uh, to play c4 because it would be occupied, uh, or, or rather under, under my control. So he played c4. I took the pawn. He took took back, knight to b6, now hitting the queen, uh, queen went to c7 here, very dangerous, so he's entering my territory, and I, I just have to make sure that everything is protected. So this pawn is protected by the rook, uh, knight is protected by the, by the pawn, knight protects bishop, uh, pawn is protected by the queen. Okay, everything is protected, but it's not so stable, so I, I want to get rid of this queen. For example, if, if I want to, um, to activate my queen on the king side, Okay, he, he cannot because this. But yeah, I mean it's it's not so clear. Uh, my bishop is also pinned, so I cannot move my bishop because the the queen will hang. Uh, he can continue to attack my knight, uh, then you know undermine my bishop and so forth. So I, I just wanted to kick him uh, out of this. I was thinking if there is a move to trap the queen, but no, no, there is not. So I played um, rook f to c8. Uh, the only available square is b7, and now I played the uh, queen to d. Eight, you know, uh, just uh, getting ready to maybe maybe to play the rook here or queen here, oh, just, just just to kick away this queen from my territory. He played uh, queen to a6. He was afraid that I would trap his queen, and then I played uh, queen to f uh, uh, queen to f6. This is now the bishop is no longer attacked, and uh, okay, I can play this. So uh, the idea now is to uh, take the h3 pawn, and after he takes, so I, I take the pawn. After he takes with the pawn, then I can take the uh, the knight. So he saw this and played uh, uh, queen to e2. And uh, now I have plenty of options. I found uh, this nice move. So uh, rook to c4, you know, hitting this uh, pawn and this pawn. Uh, this is immediately unprotected, and uh, this will become unprotected after I play uh, queen to g6, uh, threatening uh, yeah, this pawn twice. So he saw this that this is hanging, so he defended uh, this pawn with rook f to b1, and then I played uh, queen to g6. Now there is a double attack, so first of all I'm attacking this, I'm pinning 
pinning this pawn. Uh, this means that uh, this pawn is hanging, so I threaten here to take on h3 and also I threat to take on e4. So he played um, g4, uh, stopping uh, you know me from taking h3, but now I took e4. And he decides to exchange queens here, so he makes things easier for me. Uh, knight to d2, hitting the rook. Uh, rook goes to d4, hitting both knight and the pawn. Knight comes back to f3, and I capture the pawn. Okay, now I have, you know, obvious material advantage. Uh, rook to b3, rook to c8, just taking the open file. And he played a3 here, I'm not sure why. And uh, here I played f6. So just, you know, fortifying my position. Now the knight cannot uh, jump to g5, and if I need uh, my king to come into game, it's uh, it's very quickly to um, to centralize my king. So he played uh, g5 here, and uh, okay, this move is maybe not so accurate. I, I just played it very quickly, so I took the pawn. I I did see that uh, this bishop is unprotected, so there could be some discovered attacks over the bishop. But what can he do with this knight? I mean, if he takes the pawn, for example, I can just uh, you know, take the pawn back, he takes, we just exchanged uh, uh, minor pieces. So, he, he doesn't have anything with this discovered uh, So he took the pawn here, I took back, he played the king to h2, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, sorry, uh, I retreated the bishop to uh, back to d7, I was thinking about the best move, the best place, but I, I like my bishop playing on the both sides of the board. Uh, he delivered check, I just uh, slide uh, slided my king away, uh, knight to h4, I now am offering to exchange rooks, he accepts, so we exchange rooks, and now he has another check which he plays, I go to f7, and then uh, rook to f3 is played, uh, he probably wants to you know, do something with his knight, this knight doesn't do anything, uh, may maybe the better plan was you know, to, mm, to remaneuver his knight uh, here on e3, try to find some outpost for it, but okay, he played this. I played rook to d4, hitting the knight, he, he moved the knight now to f5, I took, he took, so we are just changing pieces, and now uh, rook to d3, we just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm picking up the pawns. He played rook, rook to h5, uh, threatening to take my h7 pawn, I put the king up, attacking the rook, protecting the pawn, he retrieves the rook to h3, also protecting the pawn, okay, but I just take the rook, he takes. And now, uh, I have to, he, he doesn't want to resign, so I have to think about the uh, fastest way to, to win here. So I, I don't care about winning these pawns and so forth, so I, I don't even need the knight, uh, so I have this fast pawn. So my idea is just to bring the king uh, you know, here and uh, support support this pawn. So um, king to f5 is played, uh, he wants to stop me, king to g3, king to e4, uh, he played f3 with the check, uh, king to e3, he makes one final attempt to king to g2, you know, may, may, maybe wanting to come here to stop the pawn, and then I played uh, king to e2, taking the opposition, and now this pawn is just promoting. And he saw, you know, that he doesn't have any, any play anymore, so he resigned the game here. Okay, and this concludes the tournament. I, I got this, this point. I didn't get any rating points because my opponent is not rated. And, uh, okay, I have three and a half points. So, uh, let me now give you some final thoughts about uh, what I've learned from this tournament and uh, how my improvement is going and uh, what do I plan to do to do next. Okay, so um, just a quick recap of, about this tournament. Um, I had to say I had some high expectations from this tournament. I was um, really uh, really in the, in the fighting mode and I was hoping that uh, finally I will get uh, my long desired win over a strong opponent. So by strong opponent, I mean some, some, somebody who is 1900, uh, 2000, and who is, you know, an adult, uh, who is uh, serious in chess, and, uh, you know, some, some, some serious, uh, serious opponent, serious player. And, I mean, somebody who is not a kid, you know, just uh, to, be, to be honest. So I, I was hoping for that, to have some victory, and I was hoping to have, get some, some nice points. Uh, there is always on this tournament under 1600 award, so... This is also my, my secret hope that maybe I will win one of the first three places in the 1600 and get you know a nice medal and uh, but okay this this didn't happen so I will have to be patient and I will have to wait uh, you know for my 
for my op opportunity in the in the future. Uh, in the first uh, two round uh, two rounds, I played a very long games. So this one like uh, one of, first game was longer than four hours. The second game is a little less than four hours. But anyway, I did face the strong opponents. I did have a good good uh, position. I managed to hold my grounds, and but finally I you know I, I slipped. So in the first game, I lost on the forty eight move. The second game, I lo I lost in thirty eight move. So um, I was I was playing very good and I was very focused and uh, I, I think it, it's it's a good chess and uh, when I analyze the the first uh, first two games of the tournament uh, I I can really see some improvement so maybe it's not seen in the rating or the result but in the way I handle positions in the way I, I think about positions uh, in the way how I, I find the tactical resources and uh, stop my opponent's ideas and so on so uh, in these first two games I can really see improvement. When I compared uh, these games with the games I played uh, a year ago, and then the problem started when uh, I was mm, started to be paired with uh, with kids. You know, it's very difficult to uh, to play, you know, uh, two thousand plus opponent in a four hour game in, in which you know every tiny detail matters in, in the position. Every subtlety is important, and then to be paired with um, you know eleven hundred uh, kid who who just uh, learned the rules of chess and. Uh, you know, it, it's just very difficult to shift from from this mentality to to this mentality. And then I started to play, you know, to, to play quickly. I started to uh, to lose my focus, to lose my seriousness. Uh, I I I didn't approach the game so seriously when I uh, like in the first two rounds, and uh, this got me out out of my rhythm. And uh, this this is very bad. This is something I have to work uh, to work on. So I, I started to play too fast. Uh, then I either uh, overestimated my opponents or I underestimated them. And uh, my impression of my opponents make the impact on my move selection process, and this, this is just terrible. I, I I cannot allow myself to, you know, that my <laughs> subjective impression of my opponent uh, dictates my uh, move selection process. It's, it's it's not good. So in the end, I scored three and a half points out of nine. I won three games against kids, and uh, I drew one game against a two thousand plus opponent. And uh, okay, this is something I I have to give myself credit. Overall, I dropped my rating uh, by eight points, so minus eight points here. So, what lessons did I uh, learn? Well, uh, first of all, there is a psychological aspect of chess which uh, played the dominant uh, part in this in this tournament. Uh, so, I was too much concerned about the profile of my opponent. I gave too much importance to the impression I had on the opponent. I didn't play the board, so they always say play the board. Don't worry, who is sitting uh, opposite to you. Just focus on the board, find the best moves, uh, and so forth. Uh, I didn't do this, so uh, as a result, uh, I either underestimated or overestimated my opponents. My move selection process was impacted by the impression I had on my opponents, and uh, this is just very bad. So the solution is uh, that I really have to uh, learn and to force myself to play the board, to play uh, the best moves I can find, given my ability, given my vision, I have you know, I have limitations, so obviously, in my knowledge, in my skill, in my board vision, in my uh, ability to calculate. So, yeah, my limitations are my limitations. I, I cannot go beyond them, but I can uh, find the best move given my current uh, state of knowledge and skill. So, th this is how I need to approach every position, regardless of who is sitting um, opposite to me. Uh, the second thing is uh, consistency, consistency in thought process. So every time I made a blunder in, in this tournament, uh, it was because I didn't follow my algorithm. Uh, if you don't know what algorithm I'm talking about, I, I'll put the link uh, either in the video or down in the description, so check out the video. Uh, I think it's a great short algorithm how to avoid blunders and how to, you know, at least avoid some traps or find some, some good tactical uh, opportunities on the board. And uh, to follow the algorithm on every move, even though it's short algorithm, it's not easy because you know, chess game is uh, 40 to 60 moves and uh, your, your brain is just fighting you. Your brain doesn't want to think. So you, you have to force your brain to think every time and to go through these very, very simple questions. And uh, yeah, if, if I have uh, been doing this, I, I wouldn't blunder so much. So every blunder can be explained by the uh, not sticking to the algorithm. And um, the most vi uh, violated algorithm rule, which I uh, found in my uh, post-mortem analysis was uh, that I was violating this golden rule of calculation and uh, this golden rule of calculations uh, is simply states that uh, uh, when you cal calculate the sequence of forcing moves you have to end, cal uh, end calculation with your opponent's last move, not with your moves. So for example, you know, 
I take, he takes, I take, he takes, I take, and then I stop the calculation. Now, if I take is the last forcing move, I need to find one more move from my opponent. And only if if I'm sure that after all this sequence, my opponent doesn't have any forcing moves, then I can I can stop the calculation. And uh, I have violated this uh, rule over and over again, and uh, this was uh, the main cause for my losses. So I, I, I can tell this with confidence because I analyze the games. Um, so the solution is to just to, to force myself to follow algorithm always without exceptions. Of course, once out, uh, I'm out of the book. So if I have to play, uh, if I happen to know ten moves of theory, then okay, I don't need to follow the algorithm. But even when I play the uh, the, the, the theory moves, I need to, to take my time to be sure that these are the really the moves which uh, uh, I think I know from from theory. And this gets us to the third point, uh, and this is time management. So my time management was uh, very poor. I was playing uh, too fast for one reason or for another. Either because I t uh, thought I had no chance, so what's the difference? I can just play the moves and uh, get it over with. Or because I uh, underestimated my opponents and I thought, okay, I, I don't have to think hard, you know, he's weak, I will, I will win either way. So it's... Uh, uh, it's not good. I, I was playing too fast, and I have to slow down. Especially since I know that blitz is not my, you know, my strength. My, uh, if I have any strengths in chess, uh, this is the, you know, uh, good algorithm of thinking which I have developed. Uh, uh, scholarly understanding of, of positions of, of some, you know, general principles and so on. So um, yeah, quick chess is not my kind of chess. So if I play quickly, I'm just giving my opponent some uh, some chances, and. Um, yeah, and th this is part of the human nature. Again, I, I have to fight my, my own nature, not just my own, but, you know, every brain uh, is uh, by nature <laughs> such that uh, it doesn't want to think. So you have to force it to think. And there are many good books, uh, you know, written, written about uh, about this feature of the brain, and uh, I like this uh, saying by uh, Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. He says that uh, chess is a constant struggle between my desire not to lose and my desire not to think. So yeah, desire not to think is a very strong desire. So you have to fight your brain all the time. And if you play quickly, you are just uh, allowing your brain not to, not to think. And this is not good uh, for chess. So this problem is also easily solved. Uh, first of all, I just need to, to follow the algorithm after uh, every move my opponents make. Uh, I need to ask these you know, three simple questions. And before I make a move, I have to do blunder check again, three simple questions. And if I do this, uh, I, I, will, I will start spending more time. On the, on the clock, and um, also I have to make sure that I understand the position. So uh, I'm not I'm talking about pretty much truth about position, but the role of every piece on the board. So uh, my piece is my opponent's piece, is what is, um, what is the role of, of each piece. So I, I have to understand this before even trying to, to come up with candidate moves, because if I don't understand uh, the role of the pieces, how can I find the good, uh, good moves? So if, if, if I stick to these uh, simple you know, rules, I can uh, um, solve this problem of bad time management. So uh, what next? The way forward. So I'm looking forward already to my next tournament. My next tournament uh, will be played on August 20. So it's uh, less than a month for now. It's uh, uh, in uh, home. It's uh, one uh, town which is uh, near, near where, I, where I live. So I'll be at home. I will uh, go... Uh, go on the tournament uh, from my home. So I, I, I don't need accommodation, I will just go play the game and come, come back home. So I don't intend to weep and to feel sorry for myself and, uh, well, it's it's a sport and uh, if, if you were engaged in, in any in any sports, uh, then you know that uh, the best sportsmen are the one who, you know, lose the important match, the match of, the, of their game, and then tomorrow they get up early in the morning and they go to the gym and they continue the training. So. This is how the the, the great sportsmen uh, do. So this is what I uh, what I tend to do as well. So tomorrow is a new day. I will continue working with a big, big uh, Polgar book. So I I will be doing mate in two, mate in three. So to increase my my board vision, my calculation skills. So I, I'm and stick I am sticking to my method. So I'm doing Polgar puzzles and uh, also I'm doing uh, I'm going through uh, master games. Um, I'm currently go, going through Morphe games again. Uh, I plan to go to go through Capablanca games, to Alekhin games, and uh, and so forth, and um, also all other things you know concerning chess, like uh, watching uh, watching the high quality chess videos, uh, games online, and uh, chess courses, and, and so so on. So just uh, just doing what I what I uh, 
was doing so far because I see improvement. I don't uh, I don't uh, see a reason to change it. So I, I don't think, uh, you know intend to start working suddenly of my openings because my openings are fine. Uh, I, I saw this. I don't have problem with this. So I'm just uh, training to increase my board vision and uh, my general uh, chess understanding. Um, playing over the board tournaments made me uh, completely unmotivated to play online. So the online chess is uh, so poor experience uh, when I compare it with uh, the over the board. So it's it's difficult to find the motive uh, for me to, to really seriously play online chess. And uh, this is maybe not good, but this is how it is. So I did, uh, give, when I talk about online chess, I, I did manage to, you know, um, to, to get some benchmarks like 2000 in rapid leeches, uh, 1800, almost 1900 in blitz and, and so forth. But uh, I, I don't have motive for this and I will try to avoid uh, uh, blitz. I will try to avoid uh, online blitz or online okay, bullet I don't even play. But uh, I, I'll try to, to avoid these uh, kinds of chess in which uh, I, I, I don't uh, have time to think. So because, like I said, my main main problem is to force myself to think, to implement the algorithm, to take my time and so on. So I will not encourage uh, chess, which doesn't require me to do so. And uh, yeah, this is it. And uh, for the psychological problems, I will try to do best in my, in my next tournament. I will try to play the board, uh, to not be concerned with my opponent and uh, to, to apply the algorithm consistently, regardless of who is sitting uh, in, in opposite to me. Uh, this is it. So thank you very much for sticking with me, to following my, my tournament, my story, my journey. And uh, maybe I, I will do some more videos uh, in between. But if not, I will see you on the, on the next tournament. It's, it will be very soon. So August 20th, I will uh, try to uh, regularly analyze the games and uh, keep you informed uh, how my tournament is going. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great week and see you soon. Cheers.